here we go again. I've bought the cheapest Audi TTS in the country. And let me tell you straight off the bat that this car has not got much going for it. And it's definitely had a hard life, but it's got one hell of a story to tell. So what I've bought is an Audi TTS. This is one down from the RS model, so it's still pretty quick, or it would be if I could get it started. So under the bonnet we've got a 2 litre turbo engine, the same that comes in the S3 and I believe the Edition 30 Mark V Golf. So it's a pretty decent, reliable but quite tunable package. And I'm actually a little bit surprised because under the bonnet it looks pretty reasonable compared to the rest of the car. It looks like it's been well looked after. So when I've seen this reasonably fast four wheel drive TTS pop up on an auction site for the same sort of money that you'd pay for a 2 litre diesel one, I thought it was definitely worth a gamble. Let me tell you quickly what I knew about the car when I was buying it. When you buy a car from auction it's always a bit of a risk. You're going off limited information and try and put together all the pieces of the puzzle so you can get an idea at least about what you're buying. And when I seen this one on there, there was four or five photos which doesn't give you much clarity to the situation. The first thing that I noticed when I was buying it is it was missing a wheel. It didn't even have this space saver on. I've had to have this put on whilst it was being delivered. So it was just on the floor, sat on the brake disc, which is not ideal. And that straight away raises flags because it also didn't like there was much damage in that corner. The next thing was the damage here. This wasn't clear, but you can just about make it out in the photos and I think this is from where it's been put on the floor on the brake disc and the side skirt and everything has pushed up into the wing and just folded it so that's going to need replacing definitely. And the next thing is a big one I think this would put a lot of people off buying this. Is this not one of the worst interiors you've ever seen? It's, well, I think it's pretty obvious what's happened here. The car has been set on fire. It looks like something's been you know, started on this driver's seat and obviously melted that to pieces, melted the sun visors, melted the headlining, and it looks like that Andy Warhol painting where all the clocks are kind of all dripping down, and yeah, it's a very strange, smelly interior. <laughs> but luckily, in this situation, the auction house was very good and took good photos of the interior so I could tell exactly what I thought was going to be needed. And then the final thing that I knew is that on this window here it says no and that means either one of two things, it's got no keys or it doesn't start, both of which this car has or is. And that makes it a much bigger risk because if I don't know if it starts I don't know what condition the engine is in, it could be completely obliterated or it could be absolutely fine, who knows. In short, I've got myself a car with a ruined interior, a ruined exterior, and it doesn't even start. So you can see now why I'm saying it doesn't have much going for it. But that brings us on to the question, what has happened to this car? to make it be in this state. So like I said, on the auction site, you get a very little bit of information. I knew the car was a category N write-off, which means non-structural, and I also knew that the car had been stolen, but that was it. Until I searched for this car on Car Vertical, who have conveniently sponsored today's video. So I popped this vehicle's reg into Car Vertical's database, and it brought back some very useful information. So we've got the report for my Audi TT here. As you can see, we've got a green tick for mileage, so there's no discrepancies there. It's not currently wanted as stolen, as it's obviously been recorded covered. It has had an accident in the past which we're already aware of and has no outstanding finance. So there's no nasty shocks there. Car Vertical's database checks over 411 million cars in over 30 different countries to make sure the car that you're looking at isn't a dishonest one. The next notable part on this report is the damage report. As you can see here it says the vehicle is a category N write-off which means it was a non-structural damage. And as you can see here it says that the damage happened in the United Kingdom. And when I scroll down I can see that this happened on the 28th of December 2021. So that gives us an idea of how long this car's been sitting. And here's the interesting part. At the bottom of the page, you can see that it says that the registration plate of the car was changed. But it's also confirmed by this piece of paper which I've just found inside the car. And using that registration plate, I then popped that into Google, which didn't bring back anything, but into Facebook is a different story. You see, Facebook's algorithm is a very scary one because if you post a photo of your car on there, it can actually read the registration off the photo. And then when that's searched for, it can actually bring that up. And look what we have here. We have a post saying the car has been stolen by three men with knives and a lady's been dragged out of the car back in December 21. I wonder if I get a reward for finding the car. 
Now, I'm sure this must have been a traumatic experience for the woman this happened to, and I just wanted to message the, the chap who posted it just to try and get a little bit more information. Now, strangely enough, I did have a mutual friend with him, even though he was two hours north of me, but yeah, I thought I'd pop him a message and see what he has to say. It turns out the car wasn't his, but it actually was his sister-in-law's mum. After telling him I bought the car, I think he thought that I'd bought it still stolen with no logbook. And me knowing that this car came with no keys, I thought it'd be worth an ask to see if he does have an old spare key. At first, he said no to this, but as you'll see later, he may have changed his tune. So he went on to tell me a little bit about the car and everything he knew about it to try and help me out as best as possible, which was very, very kind of him. And in return, I did him the favour of telling him all about Car Vertical so he can be careful in the future to make sure that he doesn't buy a car that's previously stolen or had hidden damage. So we continued this conversation for a little while and he gave me loads of information which has been super helpful before I started bidding on this car, meaning I was armed with loads of useful facts on it. And he was open and honest with me that they'd only just bought the car not long ago and it had a full service history and was actually a really nice clean example. And also me contacting them was actually the first that heard that this car had been found. And we're not 100% sure yet but he may have the service history and maybe even a spare key for this car. But Car Vertical can help you in so many situations. If you're buying a car which you know to be rubbish but need more information on or just buying a used car, some of these can be hiding a lot more than you may think. So to use Car Vertical and save yourself from buying something that once may have looked like this Make sure you use my link in the description or in the pinned comment and use discount code CHRIS to save yourself 10%. And now I'm armed with that extra information, I can really start to put the picture together. On closer inspection on the wheel that was missing, I can see here and here there is two snapped wheel bolts. The back wheel is missing too and also so are the other ones. So if those wheel bolts are snapped, that means that the wheel has probably fallen off at some point, which I know doesn't take a genius to figure out. And that in turn would have damaged this section of the wing here when the car dropped onto the brake disc and it would damage all this. So at that point, the car is going to be stuck exactly where it was, which is not going to be ideal because if you've robbed a car, you're probably going to be in a bit of a rush to not be seen in it. So to destroy the evidence and the car itself, it looks like they've put something on the driver's seat and set it on fire. And at that point, when you've stolen a car and you're stood next to it and it's on fire, it's probably a good idea to leg it. And I think this car was probably saved by the fact that it has a leather interior. It didn't burn fully, and obviously I know it's took its toll quite badly on the interior, but it's not fully disintegrated and didn't burn the rest of the car. I do think though it's a little bit selfish that they took the key with them when they stole it, because now I can't start it. And then I guess the rest is history. The car must have been found, gone through the insurance processes, those people would have got paid out, and then it's gone through the auction and been bought by myself. And now I have a non-running, fire-damaged, crap and stolen Audi TTS. Sounds like a good purchase. But the damage does not stop there. Yep, there's more. So the first part which really draws your attention from the outside, apart from the wing and the wheel, is the bonnet. It's obvious that something has gone on here because well, there's scratches all over the front of it, really nice long ones across here, and then some deeper stuff around here and here, and then finally, this part here, this is definitely the worst bit and it looks like from when it's been parked in the auction site it would have had a car over the top of it somehow, obviously being stored and it's been dripping brake fluid onto this bonnet causing it to melt the paint which yeah I'm definitely going to need to get that sorted. This bit doesn't matter so much but on the wing there's not only the damage here but also at the front here some nice scuffing and scraping and I don't know what's going on here, but that's not looking pretty either. Every single wheel which it has got originally is curbed to bits. It's almost like it's diamond cut all the way around the edge. I think Liam's been driving this car. Then across the rear quarter, again, there's some more scratches. Not as bad as what's on the bonnet, but still very, very noticeable, so we'll need sorting. And that's just on first inspection. Imagine how much more I'm going to find when I start working on this car. But definitely the biggest bit I'm worried about is this interior. There is so much damage in here, some of which was actually caused by me because when I was taking delivery of the car it was stuck in park and obviously I have no keys to get it out of park so I've had to rip up this trim here and in doing that managed to damage the gator so I need a new gator and that was my fault but I have managed to push the pin in which is down here get it into neutral so I can just about push the car around now but one of the most fun parts when you get a car in this state with this much of a story is checking out what's on the interior so let's give it a quick clear out and see what we can find okay here we go so first thing you notice glove box well first thing you notice obviously is that it's ruined the second thing is that the glove box is broken and the next thing we've got here is a, a motorbike glove with carbon fiber knuckles which is a strange thing to have in a car unless you know you might be using them for something else 
what's missing here? Is that the CD player? I'm guessing that's, that might be this here. Oh, no. I'm not sure. I think, that, I think that just goes there. So we've still got that, so that's okay. Let's put that in there for now. Then the trim, which I've broke. Some jump leads and some nasty gooey stuff all over them. What else have we got? Screwdriver. Ah, this is an interesting one. <laughs> got a, uh, a balaclava, which goes quite nicely with that motorbike glove. Let's just shut this quick. There we go. And then, oh, okay, that's a bit on the other side. We've got, oh wow, how fitting is that? Hair transplant requires professionalism. Honestly, you just you just couldn't write it, could you? Yep. Let's get it over with. Brilliant. Now we can move on. Ha. <laughs> then some gloves, a wheel bolt. They might have needed those earlier. Then oh, some more wheel bolts. They probably should have used these, and then they might not have been in the situation which they ended up in. Got some gammy scissors. Uh. Oh, iPhone charger, that's a win. You always need one of them. Some more wheel nuts, honestly. <laughs> Why would you not just put these in? Seems a bit daft. Some iPhone cases. Nice. Oh yes, we have a locking wheel nut. That's, uh, that's definitely gonna come in handy. Plonk that on there for now, I think. Now, I've just tried to pull the driver's seat forward so I can have a look behind here, but it's, I think the ceiling's actually melted it to the car, I literally cannot move it at all. So that's stuck there for now. So maybe we'll find some more hidden gems in here later, but unfortunately I can't get in the boot because the battery's dead and I've got no key, so it just won't open. But there may be some more gems in there. We'll have to check back in the future to see. So it's a strange collection of items anyway. Some white tape, a balaclava, one motorbike glove, and a cushion about hair transplants. So what do you guys think of my purchase? It definitely needs a full new interior. That smell is gonna be very tricky to get rid of, so it's gonna take a fair bit of work to do there. It needs a new wing, it needs the bonnet painted at a minimum, and I'm not sure on the styling of this one in particular. Someone's put like an aftermarket grill on with no badge, and I don't think I'm a fan of that, so that might need changing. Uh, obviously we need a set of wheels, we probably need new brakes at least on the front and especially that disc which it's been resting on. We also need a set of keys to be able to even think about starting it and then to see if it even does start then might need whatever the engine needs too. So there's quite a lot of work to do here. I'm not going to make you guys at home wait and ask for a certain amount of likes to tell you how much this costs this time. I'll be straight, honest and upfront. I think it was £3,200 give or take a few quid. Then there's auction fees on top of that, which worked out to about four or 500 pound. And then the delivery of the car from just above Manchester, which was 200 pounds. So all in, give or take, I'm about four grand into this car, which is roughly what a reasonably high mileage, okay condition diesel one goes for. So. Do you guys think I've got a good price or do you think I've been out over? Either way, I think it's gonna make some great videos on this car. With it being four wheel drive and it's coming up to winter, it makes a really nice usable daily driver for them. And it's still nice and quick. And you know, I think these cars look all right. They look pretty good. So it should be a nice replacement for the BMW when that goes. And also there's plenty of tuning capability on these engines with them being turbocharged and also having the KO4 turbo, which comes on these, which is the biggest kind of factory turbo, which they do. It means that you can get plenty of power out of these cars and be able to put it down with the four-wheel drive system which comes on these. I know also there is a huge market for aftermarket parts on these TTs so let me know in the comments section what modifications I should be doing because they're still a very new car to me. But that is it for this time. Don't forget if you're going to use Car Vertical use my link in the description or in the pinned comment with discount code CHRIS and save yourself 10%. Make sure you subscribe to the channel, smash a like on this video and I'll catch you next time.